welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Naga Manchetti. In the news this week, Debbie Hemsley from Watford is particularly pleased with her new enhanced breast implants. <laughs> As he gives evidence to the COVID inquiry, Boris Johnson keeps standing up to tuck in his shirt. Please sit down. Please sit down. I'm sorry, if you don't sit down, I'm going to ask the ushers to get you to leave. <laughs> and at a restaurant in Mayfair, one customer congratulates kitchen staff for successfully hiding a pubic hair in his dinner yet again. <laughs> On Ian's team tonight is a comedian whose first television appearance was on The Chase, where she got most of the questions wrong and went home with no money. Perfect training for being on this programme. Please welcome Maisie Adam. <laughs> on Paul's team tonight is one of the country's best-known fiction writers. In fact, he's right up there with Omid Scobie. Let's welcome Richard Osman. <laughs> We begin with the bigger news stories of the week. Ian and Maisie, have a look at this. Oh, writing a naughty and nice list for Christmas. <laughs> Thumbs up if you're incapable of love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that's eat out to help out. <laughs> <laughs> They've successfully deported one person to Rwanda. <laughs> um, and unfortunately, he came back again. <laughs> this is James Cleverly. The only man who's got an adverb for a surname. <laughs> I always listen to it and think, James cleverly went to Rwanda. Not that clever. The essence, the essence of the Rwanda Treaty is? Is that if British law says Rwanda is safe, it's safe. If British law says the cat is a dog... <laughs> ..so it is. The main thing for the Tory backbenches is to stop foreign courts telling us what to do. And the most disrespectful foreign court is the British Supreme Court. <laughs> which is obviously full of foreigners. I hadn't spotted it, but it clearly <laughs> it does seem to be. And they've got to be stopped. What was James Cleverley's priority when signing the treaty? I think just to stay in his job. Because <laughs> he was Home Secretary quite recently. And now... Um, sorry, he was, he was foreign, foreign secretary, secretary, and now he's home secretary. Yes, they rotate. They're sort of sugar babes-esque, aren't they? <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> he's very much the mucha buena. Of he the, is. Uh, he's the mucha. <laughs> he was the one who originally said that the Rwanda scheme was batshit. Batshit crazy. I think he says he doesn't recall saying that, or he doesn't... How do you not saying? remember saying the Rwanda policy is batshit crazy? <laughs> <laughs> well, other people say... They don't remember shouting, party, everybody, get the booze in. <laughs> How many parties do you go to, Ian? <laughs> um... I want to go to New Year's at yours. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded like, you know, when you have, um, like, community theatre come into your school to tell you not to do drugs. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you're being unfair on Ian. The last party I went to was to celebrate the anniversary of the repeal of the corn. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... <laughs> <laughs> wow, I didn't get home till half past six in the evening. <laughs> <laughs> the story is the government is falling apart. And... What's the new story? Jen, oh, yeah. <laughs> Jen Rick's gone. Jen Rick's gone. He's resigned, hasn't he? Yes, he was immigration minister. Yes. Um, briefly. And he said that Rishi's plan is doomed. And he said it's not tough enough. Yes. It's not tough enough, which shows he is a man of the people, cos if there's one thing we all said about the Rwanda policy was it was too nice. <laughs> Jenrick is the man who wanted the mural in the Immigration Centre for Children removed. Do you remember there were some oh, nice yes. cartoons? And he said, it's too welcoming. Um, and, you know, those kids, God, they're going to get the wrong idea, aren't they? Three of them were Boris's. <laughs> <laughs> Suella, she keeps sticking an oar in, doesn't she? Well, no, she doesn't. She doesn't want the oars. She doesn't want the boats, does she? <laughs> She's not happy, and Rishi Sunak is left in the middle, and his policy, which was uh, stop the boats... Um... <laughs> <laughs> when he does his speech about that, 
You remember, like, during COVID, mm. it would say, keep your distance or something on front yeah. of the podium. They were yeah. telling you what to do on front of the podium. Mm. Yes. Now on the front of the podium, it says, stop the boats, as if he's asking us to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm always like, I'm just genuinely quite busy. <laughs> We look at Rishi defending the treaty. It's interesting. This is him on Thursday at the Downing Street conference. Claiming asylum. That's now blocked. Abuse of our modern slavery rules. Blocked. The idea that Rwanda isn't safe. Blocked. The risk of being sent to some other country. Blocked. And spurious human rights claims. You'd better believe that we've blocked those two. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm thinking is, how am I going to stop the boats, Rishi? <laughs> <laughs> what did you make of his presentation there? Um, not good. Not good. <laughs> it's like when they have to do a task on The Apprentice, when they have to pitch to people. Mm. They go, and you better believe <laughs> this is the best milk substitute <laughs> in the world. I thought it would be useful to give Rishi some tips on presentation from the Argentinian president. Ministerio de Trabajo, Empleo y Seguridad Social. Afuera. Ministerio de Educación. Adoctrinamiento. Afuera. Ministerio de Transporte. Afuera. I know him. We go to the same hairdresser. <laughs> <laughs> the government saying it cannot go any further with the Rwanda Treaty as the Rwandans wouldn't let the government do anything more extreme. Right, that's sovereignty for you. <laughs> the president of Rwanda got 98% of the vote. Paul yeah, Kagame. It's, it's not bad in the democracy. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> to give you a clue about how big 98% is, on pointless ones, we showed yeah. a picture of planet Earth. Yes. It said, what is this? <laughs> and it scored 91. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I knew I should have gone on that and not yeah. the chase. <laughs> I'd love to know what the other nine answers. Oh, my God, I know. They're out there driving somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> There's a Conservative MP for Stoke-on-Trent North. Jonathan yes. Gullis. Oh, yeah. yes, Jonathan Gullis. Now, he's hoping to appeal to the working-class Tory vote. He's very focused on a single issue. They got stuck in North Islington having chai latte and avocado and toast. We don't want the chai latte avocado brigade arriving anywhere <laughs> anytime soon. Avocado eating, chai latte drinking elite. Green <laughs> chai latte and scoffing down quinoa. <laughs> What's he got against them? <laughs> oh, no, sir. They're really good. They're really, really good. Where's the avocado? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're wearing it. <laughs> Yes. Um, <laughs> the Algerian motive Robert Jenrick might have for jumping ship. I'm assuming he wants to be leader, much as Soweto Braverman does. There's another as well. Grant Shapps. There's a thing on GB News, which we did on this programme, called... Um, Lager with Lee. Lager with Lee. <laughs> Lee Andertal, as he's known. <laughs> uh... You're on the fire today. <laughs> he does this show, and apparently Grant Shapps is going to do something that rhymes with Shapps. Yeah. Peach Schnapps? Schnapps. Peach Schnapps is with it, Grant Schnapps. <laughs> Absolutely right. Well done. Uh... <laughs> Genius. What is happening? There used to be Fizz with Liz. <laughs> you went round to Liz Truss's and... and... and fell ill. <laughs> Guess some others. Um... Okay. Is there chai tea with the Stoke-on-Trent MP? <laughs> Good. Cheese and wine with Michael Heseltine. <laughs> 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 Who called the government's record a betrayal of the promises to control immigration? Chico. <laughs> Keir Starmer. This was oh. in a Telegraph interview. What else did he say? He admired Margaret Thatcher. That was the one that called the headline. Oh, yeah. It? That support for Margaret Thatcher got lots of coverage in the press, yes. but not one of them bothered to show how Keir Starmer would look with Margaret Thatcher's hair. Why, why not? <laughs> how did you miss that? So we've done it for you. <laughs> it's like every housewife from Coronation Street. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't look like it's been photoshopped, that's the thing, it looks genuine. <laughs> I keep expecting him to start singing Surprise, Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the government's attempt to send people to Rwanda. The government's latest immigration policy now makes it harder for anyone to bring their wife or spouse into the country. 
This sounds petty. It's probably just aimed at Prince Harry. <laughs> The BBC covered Robert Jenrick's resignation and protest of the bill, including the question that everyone is asking. <laughs> <laughs> Paul and Richard, take a look at this. Yes. OK, this is a man who set his alarm clock too early. <laughs> uh, there he's been injected with some backbone. <laughs> and that's literally just before the Bible catches fire. <laughs> Boris has appeared at the COVID inquiry for, uh, on Wednesday and Thursday and claimed that when he said things like, let people die, uh, he was just expressing views that other people had said, uh, him being one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't entirely convinced by the emotional bit. And the fact that he had an onion chopped up in front of him. Yeah. <laughs> How did Boris prepare for his appearance? I imagine on these situations you want to sort of practice, you know, in a room where people fire questions at you and you're, you know, determined not to lose your temper, show even-handed spirit sort of thing, while people shout fuck wit at you. <laughs> <laughs> I bet Carrie was more than happy to do a few practices of that. <laughs> According to The Times, Boris's legal team presented him with a 6,000-page document to prepare him for his grilling. As if he's going to read that. <laughs> <laughs> this is Boris at the start of the day. That serious hairdo. Mm -hmm. Here he is at the end. You know it's bad when I'm slagging off your hair. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that apparently he deliberately ruffles himself. Oh, I've seen him do it on this do... program. Hair just come out of makeup. Makeup's there, sort of combing his hair and stuff. Fifteen seconds coming out later. Admittedly, there is a wind tunnel between there and here. <laughs> But it's an attempt to distract attention from the fact that his answers are all over the place. Yes. Just look at his hair and think, yes. why is that so messy? And then you yes. look at what he's saying, which yeah. was pitiful. Yeah. And he was smirking. He literally, he's still taking mm. the piss out of us. Mm. Uh, yeah. I feel a bit sorry for the guy. He's been called a liar, he's yeah. been accused of all sorts of things, but he must be thinking, good news, I can get myself out of this because I've got all those WhatsApps that I sent at the time that are going to prove my innocence. Yeah. <laughs> and then he, he goes to his phone, he's like, oh, you are absolutely kidding me. <laughs> he doesn't have anyone like MI5 or anyone who can actually uh, get them back. No, There's no, nothing no. you can do. That's it, that's it. Shall we be fair? I yeah. mean, technology's not easy. No. Uh, here it is in action. Mm. Do you know why your phone was missing those 5,000-odd WhatsApps? I, I don't know the exact reason, but it looks uh, as though it's something to do with the app going down and then uh, coming up again, um, but somehow uh, not it, it, it automatically erasing all the things uh, between that date when, when it went down and the moment when it was last backed up. <laughs> so I, I can't give you the technical explanation, but that's the best I'm able to give. Oh. That's what kind of a conversation with my mum. I mean, even my mum's got someone around the corner. That is, can, your mum's going to be fuming it. with that, Richard. I tell you what, I wouldn't be happy if I were your mum and you've just come. You wouldn't be happy if you were my mum. <laughs> oh. That's right. Been invited on the program yeah. as a guest, and suddenly <laughs> best-selling novelist, fly me. And I wouldn't be a good enough son. No, I hear you. I shouldn't say off my mum. But uh, I'm just saying. That it's oh, you like... backtrack that quickly. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> Boris Johnson was being quizzed about various members of his cabinet during the pandemic. What did he have to say about Matt Hancock? He supported him. He stood him. up for him, didn't did he? he? Yeah. yeah. He said he still backs him as a minister. Over a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> he said he was intellectually able. No. Oh. Intellectually a table. <laughs> <laughs> intellectually able. No way. No way. The man's a buffoon. <laughs> It's not a glowing review, no, is it? It's like, oh, yeah, he's, he's capable of thought. The other thing Boris said, cos they were arguing about lockdown, and he said, um, I'm d defending lockdown because it was the only tool I had available. And I thought, God, look at your cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> What's gone up at the BBC? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> the licence fee. Correct. Oh, yeah. £10.50 more, isn't mm. it? But the government said it, it can't go up 
in line with inflation, it has to be... It's about half, isn't it? Unlike other years, the rise is less than the average annual inflation rates. There is a real question <laughs> yes. about how this is going to affect the quality of BBC programming, the answer being that's... <laughs> Isn't it great that it, like, on the day that the licence fee was announced that it was going up, it went to BBC News, where the newsreader greeted you with that? <laughs> <laughs> we got oh, the clip. yes. Have you seen this? Good. It's a split second that she changes, though. I mean, it's really... I mean, has anyone officially timed how quickly we get from <laughs> that to, um, the Middle East? <laughs> <laughs> you should do that, Naga, every time yeah. you do the news. Imagine if you started tonight going, ''Hello, welcome to... Have I got news for you?'' <laughs> BBC Breakfast tomorrow, you and Charlie, both of you, just the first ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Ten minutes? Yeah. And now here's Carol with the weather. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Carol Kirkwood's more of a... <laughs> I've never seen Naga looking so uncomfortable. <laughs> This is Boris Johnson's evidence at the COVID inquiry, talking about aggressive WhatsApp exchanges between his advisers and the civil service. Boris Johnson told the inquiry that abusive messages are part of the creative process. <laughs> I'm buying into this, OK? So, Boris, you're a useless tosser. Make of that what you will. <laughs> <laughs> and so to round two, the strengthometer of news. Ian? Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a promise? <laughs> You're in a feisty mood tonight, Ian. Have you had a oh. cappuccino? <laughs> I've had a try latte, mate. <laughs> I feel like my mum and dad are having an argument at the <laughs> dinner table. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting a look. Yeah. And she's my mum, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fingers on buzzers, teams. Here's your first one. Buzz in if you know the answer. <laughs> well, this is the garden ornament that the couple had in their garden for many years, decades even, and it turned out to be an unexploded bomb, as the sign helpfully suggests. <laughs> um, you think they would have spotted that, wouldn't you? Over yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think she said I used to sort of clean the spade on it sometimes, just by knocking the spade and knocking the mud off it. <laughs> Uh, yep, yeah, you're bang on. Geoffrey and Sean Edwards of South Wales had left the unexploded missile outside their home for more than four decades because they thought it was a garden ornament. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> yeah. Um, what else did Mrs Edwards use the bomb for? Well, she explains. I used to put new plants in per fresh and I'd dig them with my trowel and it was the right height for me to bang the trowel onto the bomb then to get rid of the excess earth. I'd done it for 40... I, I, I did it a couple of, couple of weeks ago. I've, I've done it for 41 years. I patted the bomb the, the morning, the Thursday morning and uh, wished it good luck. <laughs> How did they discover it was a bomb? They took it to the Antiques Roadshow. <laughs> Did the Saudis try to buy it? <laughs> oh, I think it was a policeman, wasn't it? Yeah, a passing policeman noticed it in their back garden. Uh, Geoffrey Edwards told The Guardian, we didn't sleep a wink all night. It knocked us for six. That's Beth the least it could do. Yes. <laughs> the bomb's old spot now awaits a special shrub. <laughs> or they could go for one of these lovely cacti, which were found on the beach the other day. <laughs> <laughs> An elderly couple were surprised on a recent trip to Weatherspoons. Have you heard of this story? <laughs> so have you heard of Weatherspoons? Yeah. <laughs> There's a Facebook game you can play where if you're in a particular Weatherspoons, mm. you can send a thing asking for people to buy you a drink. And a guy was there with his elderly parents. It was their grandson. It was yeah. their grandson. It was like 10 Downing Street by the end of it, I think. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we can show you the couple, happy couple at the start of the night. There you go. 
And then the pints, the wine, the shots started to arrive. <laughs> <laughs> Is she thinking to herself, I should have married Cary Grant when I had the chance? <laughs> <laughs> Time now for the odd one out round. Yep. Just one between you this week. Oh, OK. Your four are Australia, Mo Salah, an iceberg and King Charles's curtain. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the iceberg, if that's the, the, the big iceberg that's floated away from all the other ice... It is? It is. Oh. Is it five times the size of Britain or something like that? What? Whoa. Uh, it's twice the size of Greater London. Oh, no. Which is still... <laughs> 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 uh, uh, are there other parts of Britain? <laughs> Do you know what? You can only say that in front of a London audience. I don't mean that. I can say it because it was a London audience. I wouldn't say it in Sheffield. <laughs> it's so unlike a man to exaggerate size, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Well, to compare something to twice the size of Greater London, yes, it is <laughs> quite great. And don't forget, 90% of it's underwater. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but they all scored against Chelsea this season. I think you better tell us. They've all turned up somewhere unexpectedly, apart okay. from Australia, which hasn't turned up at all. It was recently revealed that if you went onto the search engine Bing and typed, does Australia exist, <laughs> the answer that comes back is no. <laughs> How have Australians reacted to the suggestion that they're not real? Well, well they haven't. <laughs> <laughs> I would say with typical robust and bawdy humour. One person commented saying, get off the mushrooms, love, you're talking through your arse. <laughs> there we are. You saw Mo Salah, Liverpool striker. Mo Salah says he plays a game of online chess every day, but people don't believe it's really him. Well until he wins and runs around the room with his shirt pulled over his head. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about King Charles's curtains, shall we? Where have they turned up? Are, are these big curtains or are they just little ones, like on a plaque, where you say, I declare this open, you go... <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to pout when you do it. Do you not? <laughs> Has he re-gifted? <laughs> Has he? Has he re-gifted them? Re-gifted his oh. curtains to Prince Harry for Christmas. <laughs> He's had all the curtains in Buckingham Palace and Windsor Castle taken down. Yep. He's turned them into kimonos. <laughs> Is it Julie Andrews? <laughs> Here's one. Oh, that's nice. That's charming. It looks just like a curtain. <laughs> He's made a special blue one. Uh, this is what Charles sent to Akshata Sunak. Time now for the Missing Words round, which this week features as its guest publication, Canine, the lifestyle magazine for dog lovers. Uh, we're going to start with man who takes pet duck to the pub, what? Stuck with a large bill. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, Richard! There we are. Man who takes pet duck to the pub says it's a good conversation starter. Now, this is Gillingham man Mark Collier with his duck called Dog. <laughs> is that the hat he wears? You don't need to be bringing a duck if that's the hat you wear. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of conversation starters there, aren't there? A duck is a good conversation starter and, in fact, a good starter. <laughs> it's also a rather ambiguous phrase, isn't it? The duck is a conversation starter. As if the duck goes around the pub saying, what was the best holiday you ever had? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's a real introvert, and the duck is just is his wingman. Yeah, oh, yeah wingman. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're on fire! Yeah. Didn't even know he's doing it. Didn't even know he's doing it. Didn't even know he's doing it. I bet when you write your books, you think, oh, I didn't know that was the killer. <laughs> <laughs> Next, if you want to live longer, then you should what? You should have thought about that before taking up competitive chain smoking. <laughs> I'll tell you a wild guess, is it sell your soul to Beelzebub? <laughs> <coughs> the Lucifer? Grant Shapps. Grant Shapps. <laughs> if you want to live longer, then you should... Avoid... Eat more beans. Oh, more beans. Ah. Now, this is according to Helena Pereira dos Santos of Brazil. She's 115 years old. No. Oh. Doesn't look a day over 114. <laughs> I think it's the biggest disparity between the size of earrings and the size of ears I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Look at that. Next, a dog that doesn't enjoy a bath will what? Oh, this is a Samuel Johnson quote, isn't it? <laughs> a dog that doesn't enjoy a bath will be tired of London. <laughs> 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 it, 
Oh, it uh, will look like Boris Johnson within three days. <laughs> <laughs> it's that Japanese proverb, a dog that doesn't enjoy a bath will prosper in the shower. <laughs> a dog that doesn't enjoy a bath will have nightmares about having a bath. Oh, how do you know? Oh. <laughs> you see their little paws going when they're sleeping, don't you? No. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, Etiquette Guide says it's now acceptable to what at dinner parties? To fart in front of an archbishop. It's that old joke, isn't it? How dare you fart before the archbishop? I'm awfully sorry, I didn't know it was his turn. <laughs> no. Is it to offer Black Forest Ghetto? <laughs> I know, it's an awful thought. <laughs> Is it take cocaine? <laughs> <laughs> Why does that suddenly sound like a line from an Oscar Wilde play? <laughs> Where do you keep your cocaine? In a handbag. <laughs> Etiquette Guide says it's now acceptable to talk about sex at dinner parties. Do remember, though, it's never acceptable to talk about dinner at an orgy. <laughs> <laughs> the final scores are Ian and Maisie. We're still on two, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> this is worse than when I went on the chase. <laughs> Paul and Richard, you've progressed to six. Six. Well done. There we are. You Thank you. I'm going to apologise to Maisie and say I'm really sorry it wasn't my fault. I was badly advised collectively. <laughs> <laughs> and I am very, very sorry. <laughs> now, what does that say about Ian? He's actually very intellectually able. <laughs> <laughs> Before we go, there's just time for the caption competition. It's a misquote from Richard III. A duck, a duck, my kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> And the duck is saying, and which pub are we going to tonight? <laughs> is the man in the back saying, where'd you get that? And the duck says, I won him in a raffle. <laughs> On which note, we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop, Maisie Adam, Paul Merton and Richard Osman. And I leave you with news that during a foreign policy meeting at number 10, there's an unscheduled break in proceedings after Larry the cat climbs onto a ceiling fan. <laughs> <laughs> In Westminster, there's evidence that Keir Starmer has spent the last ten minutes listening to Angela Rayner. <laughs> <laughs> and at a warehouse rave in Hackney Wick, after the bar runs out of bottled water, there are concerns that Michael Gove may be a little dehydrated. <laughs> Fill those long festive family silences this year with the Have I Got News For You quiz of 2023 book available in all the places you'd expect. Or just invite your neighbours around. Memories are sparked with a blast from the past in Two Doors Down next.